Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed my last video where I made these beautiful letters that you can see in my background today. And I really like it and I recommend that you guys try it out because they're really, really easy to make and they're really inexpensive too. So I mean, why not? So today we are doing an exciting DIY that I've been wanting to do like forever. I just haven't had the time or the money or the time to do this and now I finally do and so yeah I'm just gonna show you guys how to make DIY headboards out of a palette so this is also a upcycling project and a DIY at the same time so this is gonna be very exciting this is my first like kind of upcycling well this is my second one actually because the magazine one was kind of upcycling but it was pretty easy so I wouldn't count it as upcycling. But yeah, this is my first real upcycling video and I'm really excited. So first step before you start anything, you have to go look for your palette. So I recommend going to companies and going to resale stores or going to thrift stores because they usually use palettes to transport their things and I know Savers has, but they usually keep it for their own operation. And there's, I think, Long's Drugs have them. You just have to look around in your area and find places that have palettes. Because usually, most places do. But you just have to ask because you can't just take it. That's, that's not good. You don't just take things without asking. So you always have to ask, but... Don't be afraid to ask because it's free wood and they'll likely give it to you if you if they have like a bunch that they don't need. And one thing to remember, this is very very important so do not skip this step. When looking for your palettes, you want to look for a mark or a label or some sort of marking that says HT. If it says HT, good, load it up into your car and take it home. If not, and you can't find a label, or it says something else besides HT, move on. Just move on. Those are the toxic ones, and you do not want those in your house. I repeat, you do not want those in your house. So, yeah, don't use those. Use the ones that say HT, and if you guys don't know exactly how the label is supposed to show or supposed to look like, then I'll insert a picture here. Um, so you can see it and so it looks like that and you don't want to get the other ones I'm probably repeating myself 5,000 times but that's okay because it's very important don't want you guys to die you know yeah <laughs> um, but today I'm going to try it out and I'm just gonna basically keep the wood as it is because I love the colors of it and I'll insert a clip of how it looks um, here, but I love the colors of it already. So what I really want to do is just sand it, you know, re um, paint it, paint it with wood stain, and then like hang it up onto my bed, connect it to my bed. So yeah, that's what I want to do, and I am gonna show you guys my process. So let's get to it. So first things first, you want to measure your headboard, measure the length and the width. To make sure that you have enough wood. So once you have your measurement you just want to go out to your palette and you want to do the same thing on the palette and take a pencil or something to mark it with and just mark it in that exact spot. So I'm just marking it right there. So once you have that, you're just going to take a ruler and you're just going to basically trace a straight line down. This will be a guide of where to cut and also we're going to use the portion out from that to test some colors of the wood stain. And don't mind my dog Toki, he's just sniffing around for geckos, he loves to sniff for geckos and he's a photobomber also, so <laughs> he's so cute. And yeah, just basically trace the line all the way down. Mm -hmm. 
So that is the line we are going to follow throughout this whole process so don't, you know, ruin it. And now I'm just re-measuring it to make sure that the line matches up because you want this to be pretty exact. But it's, it doesn't matter if it's not exact because when we actually cut the wood, we're going to cut it a little bit bigger than what we measured just in case I need a little bit more wood and yeah, always cut more than you need just in case you make a mistake. So the next step is to sand, but before you sand, make sure you put on the necessary equipment to keep yourself safe. Example, a mask, and I did not know how to put it on, how embarrassing. Some gloves and some glasses, just all the works. I probably look really ridiculous, but who cares, because I'm being safe, right? So once you're set and ready to go, take your sander and you're just going to sand the part that you don't need. Because I had extra parts, I wanted to test out the wood stains and this is why I am sanding it and then I'm going to take the wood stains and try the different colors. So you guys are really lucky. I didn't want you guys to hear that horrible sound of the sander because it's really, really irritating. So I'm muting it out. You guys are so lucky. And also something important to remember is always have parental supervision. So this is my mom right here. Always have parental supervision because you could sand off your hand or um, get it in your eye. And you just need to be careful because it's tools you're working with. You have to be safe. You can't really see what I'm doing here, but you basically sand it until the wood is smooth and it looks very white. You want to make sure your wood is really really smooth in order to put your paint on and it should look something like this. The, the wood is going to get all white and it's going to be really smooth so just make sure it looks something like this and feels really smooth because that is what you want. You don't want any splinters from your headboard. So once you have your wood sanded and it's ready to be painted. Then just take your wood stains, so I had four different colors and I just wanted to try them all out to see how it would look on the wood and see which one I like the best. I recommend you do this or if you know what color it is and you already like it, then you can go for it. But I just didn't know what pattern I wanted and what colors I wanted, so I'm just testing them all out. And if you guys want to know any of the colors of these wood stains, I will link them down below. Hopefully I can find them. And by the way, I'm using a rag for this application, but you can use a brush. I just wanted to use a rag because it just looks a lot more natural on the wood. And how you open a paint can is you take like a flat nose screwdriver and you just like keep going around the can and popping it up. And try not to get messy because I like spilt yeah I spilled <laughs> right there all over the place but you know what it's trial and error right So this is the finished product and those are the four colors. On the fifth row, I just mixed the, the first and the last color to make this kind of orangey tone and I don't know if I like it, but comment down below which one you guys think you like the best. One, two, three, four, or five. So these are the colors up close. 
I honestly, I think I like four the best. I do like one because of the vibrancy, but I think it's a little bit too much and it won't match my room. So after you let the wood stain dry for a little bit, you're going to want to take off all this stuff that's in the back. And as you can tell, mine was broken already. Some people like to keep the back as support, but because mine was broken, I just had to fully just go away with it. So I just took a hammer and I just smashed it. And I wasn't strong enough to do this because I am weak. So embarrassing, but I am. So I had my mom just like bang all of her anger issues out of the thing and she actually got like all of it off. And I was really impressed. And especially if you're gonna cut the wood, you need a flat surface to work on. You don't want all this other stuff to be in the way. But again, if you want the base, then you could just leave it but I chose to knock it all off. The only things that I'm leaving is these three little supporters because they're not much of a distraction. As you guys can tell, this is a long process, but if you have someone to help you, this should go by really quickly. So this is the final product and everything should be a lot more flat than last time. And I'm just basically just gonna leave it like this until I cut it with a saw I recommend you use a table saw you can use a hand saw but that might take a while and it might not be as precise but it just depends on what you guys have so now it's time to cut your wood so like I said before have a parental supervision so my brother is just helping me cut this and we use a table saw for this and I cut a little bit out of the line that I traced originally because I wanted some extra just in case I made a mistake he had to do it halfway and then he had to turn it the other way and do it that way and yeah it's pretty simple and it takes a lot of work to do but it's worth it So once you're done cutting the wood, you're going to sand your wood again and make sure there's no splinters because this is your final product and you do not want to get splinters. So just continue sanding until it's smooth and white. So this is the final product. Now you're ready for painting. So it's time for painting and just grab your rag and just basically do the same thing with the color that you chose. So this is the final product and as you can tell it's ready for installment so it really depends on what kind of bed you have and how to attach it but yeah this is pretty much the final product. So I didn't really record how to install it but this is the final product and I really really like it. I just wanted to film a few shots so you guys could see the up close detail and how it looks in the room 
and yeah so here it is and i'm really happy with the outcome and i think it looks so beautiful so here it is Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and feel inspired to do it yourself. And I think it's a really good project to do because it's using old wood so it's upcycling it and it's also creating something new that saves you a lot of money because headboards are really really expensive so this definitely saves you a load of money because the wood is free. You just have to buy the paint and the tools but I already had that because my dad's obsessed with tools and stuff like that. So, yeah. But it shouldn't be very hard if you have a dad who loves tools. Then you're you're good. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys want to recreate this upcycling slash DIY project, then use the hashtag palette upcycle underscore, you know, 21 on Instagram. And I'll check it out. And if I like your guys' photos or you have photos of you guys doing it, then please DM me. My Instagram is at interiorforless21 underscore KSM. So you guys can DM it to me and I'll post it on my account and give you guys a shout out as well. So, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye! I'm really sorry guys that I have no bloopies today. It's really disappointing and it's my trademark, but because of technical difficulties, my computer didn't hold all of the footage, so I had to delete it and I couldn't put it in. So I'm really, really sorry about that, but yeah, it is what it is and you'll be seeing more bloopies next week, so look forward to that. Bye!